All right, so this Knife Thoughts EDC, or everything that doesn't cut video, is going to be on this flashlight, which is the Fireflies, or Firefly Light, Nov Mu, which I don't actually know what the NOV means. I haven't seen it talked about anywhere on Reddit or anything like that, but the Mu means mule, meaning that uh, there is no optic for this light. So it's just the pure emitters. And uh, I want to say right out the bat, this is not a technical review. I am not that well versed on all of the technical aspects of emitters and flashlights and electronics and how they work. This is a review from a using standpoint from someone who is primarily into knives, but also really enjoys and uses flashlights, good flashlights. So uh, first of all, I wanna give some background on this light. So I actually purchased this light on September 29th, and I, there might have been some kind of wording in the you know product page that said that it was a pre-order. If so, I think that it's made it kind of sound like they were definitely gonna be available in like two weeks, um, which was the same type of wording that's often used in general for flashlights and products that are shipped from China. So it wasn't super clear to me. Now that might be my fault, but it definitely did not indicate that it was gonna take just under three months to get to you. In fact, throughout those three months, there were several times that people from Fireflies or Firefly Light, both uh, Jack, who is the person who owns or whatever is the head of the company. And then um, now I'm thinking, I can't remember the person's name uh, who then started kind of taking over communications after a little while. But a couple different emails saying, oh, it'll leave, you know, soon. It'll be shipped soon. Uh, and, you know, kept getting pushed back. Uh, now, the claim was that these have a particular driver which is what a lot of people really like about them. So uh, they have a driver that's really efficient, makes it so that you can have a really low and really high output. Um, and the claim was that, that that driver, you know, was supposed to be available and that it wasn't. And so that was pushing things back, but I don't think the communication was great. Now, this was the only light that I ordered. Uh, they did come out with some new models in the meantime. Some people got those before I got this, which was certainly a little bit frustrating, but whatever. And uh, I saw a lot of people on Reddit have gotten the wrong lights in their orders. Not only have they waited, a lot of people were frustrated about waiting less than I did, uh, but they have waited and then gotten the wrong lights or lights with the wrong auxiliary LED colors, things like that. So another reason for that type of thing might be that Fireflies or Firefly Light recently started a new website, which the purpose of is to help with launching their US-based warehouse, apparently. Now, uh, all of that, you know, I, I understand. There's also lockdowns going on. I know that they, that, uh, you know, the people that, that do Fireflies were affected by lockdowns in China recently. So there's re legitimate reasons why, uh, you know, there was a longer wait than I ever would have expected on this flashlight, but it still definitely doesn't make it a more positive experience. I, like I said, I ordered this on September 29th. I believe that I received it on December 23rd, maybe second. Uh, so about a week under three months. And, you know, like I say, the, the biggest thing was that there's just not great communication about it. Thankfully, I got the right light and everything. Um, so this light, like I said, is a mule. And this is something that was really recommended when these became available with some heavy quote marks there. Uh, it was really heavily recommended on Reddit to me and others that it's something to jump on because they haven't been available because of those, you know, driver and electronic shortages. And the reason people like it is it uh, has this really great driver. It has auxiliary LEDs. It is a mule, which is relatively unusual. It has a lot of LEDs, 
a lot of emitters for the size. It's a 21700 battery, which is kind of what people are preferring now. It has onboard charging, as you can see, it has a magnet in the tail, it has a kind of attached clip. So a lot of nice things. Um, so that's why it was recommended. That's why I jumped on it, kind of with the idea that uh, these are difficult to get. So if I didn't like it, I could get rid of it. And honestly, I think that's the way this is going to go. So let's go into the review. So now how much of this was shaded by waiting longer than I expected? I don't know. I don't think a whole lot. Um, now, I'm going to talk first, about, first of all about the fact that it's a mule. In those three months that since purchasing it, I've realized that a mule is really not what I needed. So I got this late thinking that I could use it as a kind of in the middle of the night waking up to change my baby's diaper or go to the bathroom, something like that. The problem with a mule is that it spreads the light literally everywhere. I mean, straight out from the bezel. And so that's actually, I had thought that that would be good, but because it would make for a kind of like a soft light, but it's actually worse because then you can't control where the light goes as much. So, you know, even if it has a super low mode, it's spreading the light everywhere. So, you know, you don't want to wake people up that you're not trying to wake up. Um, so I just don't think that, that it, it fits the use case that I had intended for it. Now, as you can see, it's a very low color temperature emitter. Uh, that was also something I picked because of that, because it's supposed to, um, you know, not wake you up as much in the night, not wake the baby up as much, not wake myself up as much, not be a bother to other people as much. This has, I believe, if I'm counting correctly, 21 E21A emitters. If I'm wrong about that, I'll correct it in the description. Like I said, not a technical review. But these are supposed to be good emitters, and they have this really low color temperature um, option, which is 2000K. So versus my lowest color temperature otherwise, this is an LH351D on a Workos FC11 in 2700 Kelvin. So you can see the difference there. It is very, very, very low color temperature. So here it is compared to, um, and by the way, I have 4,500 Kelvin um, background or foreground or whatever light here to help with the lighting. So that kind of throws it off a little bit, but this is a D4 V2 in 3,500 Kelvin, which is relatively low color temperature. So you can see the huge, huge difference. And then a more typical color temperature to a light that you would just like buy, like a normal light from Amazon. This is SFT40 in 6,500 K, I believe. So it's just like hugely different. This is like, like looks blue compared to the 2000 Kelvin, which looks orange of the Nova Mu. So it is a very, very low color temperature. And I've also come to realize that while it might, you know, be less disturbing in the night, this low a color temperature actually isn't as good for just like using the light, certainly outside, but even inside, I think. And, you know, this is sometimes called a, a photography light, but, you know, that's really low, even for, you know, if I was gonna use it for videos or something like that, it's lower than I would like to use. Again, I have 4,500 Kelvin in my light here. And so more than twice as high as the emitters on the Nova Mule. So it's just something where I, I don't think that I have as much use for a mule and I don't have as much use for the super low color temperature. Now the auxiliary lights, you know, they're nice. You can see it's in like party mode or whatever. Uh, they are RGB, unlike the other Firefly light light that I had, uh, the PLO9 and the PL47. Those were single color. These are RGB, so you can take full advantage of Android 2, which this has. Um, and I, the only real use that I have gotten out of this is the candle mode. So this is candle mode. It does look like legitimately a candle because of the super low color temperature. Um, so it is kind of nice for that. Uh, and Andrel 2 is good. You can really customize it. Um, there's great videos out there on how to use Andrel 2. Uh, but 
moving on and, and to be honest the the build is nice on this the um machining is nice the anodization feels nice it, it's uh it's a black color sometimes it looks a little bit navy but it is black interestingly you have to unscrew this tail cap like super far for it to actually turn the lights off so there must be direct contact there it, it must not use the contact between these two pieces and rather the threads but again not a technical review i just noticed that you can unscrew it really far versus um here is the d4 v2 and you can see i mean i unscrew it like a teens and it turns off so just boop off so uh big difference there kind of an interesting difference now the low on this is super super low uh and it's almost to the point of it being you know not really being with practically useful so this low which compared to this low you can see the big difference now this d4v2 is actually set to three out of 150 level three out of 150 because lower than that it takes forever to turn on this is actually set to five out of 150 and you can see how much lower it is and then i'll show you this is set to one and it's just really really low um so that's definitely dependent on the the internals and not the the uh, actual firmware um so it's really really low on one two and three i couldn't even actually see that light was coming out now i didn't test it at night but on four there's a little bit of light but it's like not usable so um it certainly does legitimately have a very 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 low moonlight but it's so low that it's not usable until you get to like five. It's also super, super bright. Um, now this is going to blast everything out here, but very, very bright. Um, and being that it's 21700 battery, it has this good driver. You should be able to, you know, get a good amount of use out of it, even on the brighter settings. And that was 150 out of 150. Uh, but like I say, I don't find the low to be all that useful. I might have thrown the camera off a little bit there, but I don't find the low to be all that useful. Um, you do have to still set it to, I mean, it's a good low, but it's like, it's so low that it doesn't, you can't use the lowest settings. Um, now, one thing is that it is nice that it has this onboard charging. Uh, I haven't used the onboard charging and I believe that the button light, it's not an auxiliary, emitter it, it well it is but it's a charging indicator so it doesn't turn on you know when the other auxiliaries are on but it is nice to have that but i think that it adds some length so that's another thing is that this is a relatively long light um, so it has no optic and you can see that it's not that much shorter than this um, dm11 not sure what's in the i think that's probably coffee but uh it's not that shorter than this dm11 which has a large tier optic so it's a relatively long light. I'll show you in comparison to a D1V2. You can see that it is actually uh, longer than the D1V2. And then in comparison to a D4V2, quite a bit longer. I don't have my MSR D4K, the 21700 anymore, but you can see even like a budget light like this, which is an 18650, but this Workos FC11, um, is actually a little bit shorter. So it's a relatively big light. Uh, the the uh, pocket clip does not sit very deep because it is this type of pocket clip, which is attached between the tail and the body. Um, so you've got a good bit sticking out of your pocket. Uh, I do like that it's this type of pocket clip. So I don't like the two-way pocket clips that a lot of companies use. I think that they're I just can't get them to work. They usually don't slide into the pocket uh, as easily as they should. And, and I don't wear a baseball hat very often, so they're not useful for that. Um, so I, I like that it's attached. It, you're starting to pull off, you know, whereas these could pull off. This type of kind of friction fit clip could pull off if you were carrying it in some way that it could pull off. Um, but the problem is, as you can see, 
there is very little room between the lip of the pocket clip and the head. Uh, so it's relatively hard to get into a pocket. If you're wearing jeans or anything with thicker uh, material, it's, you know, takes some intention to get it to, to slide into the pocket. Um, the other thing is that this button is like stupidly proud. I, and, I, you know, I hate to be negative. I, I usually don't even really use words that negative in my reviews. I'm pretty like positive or at least neutral. But this is like ridiculously proud. I, I don't understand why it would be made this high. Um, you are going to pretty much have to put this in lockout in your pocket, in my opinion. Or you bump into anything, you know, you bend your leg, it's going to turn on. Um, so I really don't like that. It's worse than the PLO9, and that's one of the things that I complained about on the PLO9. As compared to the MSR and Noctagon, this raised ring is like the best feature of these lights. You don't have to put them in lockout, usually, at least for me, because it's, they're just not gonna get pushed accidentally. So it's just such a huge difference. You can see how deep the D4V2's button is compared to how tall the Nov Muse is. And then even a, a cheap Orcos, you know, 30 bucks or whatever, or less, um, you can see that it's, it's recessed in a way, but the button is a little proud, but it's way less so than the Nova Mew. So I, I just don't, you know, I don't like that it's so high, too easy to press accidentally. Um, one thing here, this is not very well cut out, which is just unusual, uh, compared to, you know, that fits really well. It's just a strange thing. So as you can probably tell, I am not a huge fan of this light. Uh, the other thing, the big thing, is that this light is way more expensive than any of these lights that I've shown you. Now, uh, it is not as much as like a, a DM 1.12 like I, I have. It's in my car right now, so I don't have it here. But that's a light with 12 LEDs around the outside, one in the middle. It's a much bigger light. Um, and, you know... They're actually on sale, so you can get them for less than this uh, right now. But this light cost $108, which is, you know, I, I felt kind of uncomfortable paying that much for a light at the time, and I definitely don't feel better about it now uh, as compared to a D4 V2, depending on the configuration, of course, but it can be from like 45 to whatever, but you can get them pretty inexpensively. Uh, the Workos FC11, you, which you can get at a low color temperature, 30 bucks. DM11, now these are probably discontinued and going out of stock, but 40 bucks. D1V2, um, you know, 45 to 50, maybe less. 45 to whatever you want if you get a super fancy version, but basically half as much, right, as this light. I definitely don't see twice the, the value for me. Now, if you really like a mule, if you really want a low color temperature, if you really want that onboard charging, um, you know, I'm not saying that it's not, that it doesn't have the value for anyone, but I'm saying that if you want, if you're like me and wanted a light for getting up in the night, or if you want a general use light, certainly this is not it. Um, it's, a light with some cool features, but it does not have the value for me. I wanted to do a video, um, just my perspective on it. So if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel, click the bell and select all. I do have more flashlight videos coming as well as, you know, lots from in the past. Uh, check out my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives, flashlights, and other EDC related topics. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.